everyone, my name is Kevin Castiles, also known as Alteris, bringing you another Scene World Hardware Review, and today we're going to be talking about the Vic MIDI cartridge. This is a cartridge that recently came out from Retro Innovations, and it obviously gives the Vic 20 MIDI capabilities, as well as um, telecommunications tech capabilities in the form of RS-232 and something called Ultimem, which is a RAM expansion and um, storage on the cartridge here. Um, so you can store your programs and you know do some pretty cool stuff. So we're going to be looking at the the hardware and what you can do with it. So first, um, the cartridge obviously comes without a case. Um, that's what it looks like front and back. Um, makes it a bit hard to put into the actual VIC-20. Um, so what I did was I took a dead Cosmic Cruncher cartridge that I've got. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it didn't work at all. Um, popped off the label. Someone on the denial forums made a really nice uh, you know, authentic looking label to go on here. And um, I'm gonna cut some holes in this thing and pop my Vic MIDI inside of here. Uh, not done yet, but um, that'll really help out with the, uh, you know, popping it into the unit and protecting it. So the cartridge has um, a reset switch, which is really, really handy, um, as well as the uh, MIDI ports. It's got MIDI in, MIDI through and MIDI out. Um, currently there's only one program written for this thing that, that does MIDI, called the Vic MIDI program. Um, so it just takes MIDI in and MIDI through. In the future hopefully there'll be trackers for example or you know similar things, sequencers that will handle the MIDI out but none of that exists yet. This is, yeah, like I said before, this is a new product just came out and the software, you know, is just in its infancy to support this. Um, yeah. So the RS-232 um, plug on here, it does, uh, I think, around 900 kilobytes a second is its theoretical maximum, something like that. Um, you know, that'd be pretty cool if they actually got up to that speed. I highly doubt anything that will exist that will hit it, but basically the machine will be at its limits, which is which is pretty cool. Um, you've got some toggles here, which will turn off and on the, the UART switch um, for the MIDI and also the RS-232. Um, and then there's some switches here, uh, some buttons here, which are user-definable, um, which I don't have no idea how they work. Um, yeah, so um, besides the MIDI capabilities, the RS-232, there is the RAM expansion. Um, and I think the original uh, thought behind this was that, you know, to do a full-on proper MIDI program for the VIC-20, you're going to need more RAM, so might as well build it into the cartridge. Or else you need, you know, a, a clunky expander. And, you know, nowadays, RAM is cheap and compared to 1982 when the VIC-20 came out. So, um, it's got the Ultimem uh, capabilities. Um, that's uh, you know, on the board here. Um, there's actually another product from Retro Innovations called Ultimem, it's, which is a cartridge unto itself, which doesn't have the uh, RS-232 or MIDI um, ports. It's just the RAM expansion and the onboard storage. This unit has uh, 128 kilobytes of RAM and um, 512 or half a, half a megabyte of storage. So you can put quite a bit on here. The Ultimem, the, by itself, without the MIDI capabilities, it has more. I think it has one megabyte of RAM and eight megabytes of storage. So you can put you know, a ton of stuff on there. Probably all the commercial releases ever done for the, the VIC-20. Um, I might add that there is only, yeah, only the one program that currently exists, um, the Vic MIDI program for this, um, but um, there is a project, um, I think it's by Pixel, on um, the Denial Forum to build an actual OS that will take full advantage of the RAM on here 
and um, its other capabilities. So that's a really cool project. Head over to Denial and check that out. It's in the forums there. Okay, so I'm going to pop this into the machine and we'll see what it can do. Um, so yeah, without a case, you really, I mean, in general, VIC-20 cartridges are a bit, you know, tough to get in. You have to think, this is, this is one of the first systems, really, cartridge systems, um, and it's a bit clunky, but yeah, so you have to be careful. So I just kind of line it up properly, um, and then I put my hand over it like this, and, you know, firmly push it in. There we are. Okay, it's in there. You know, sits in there nicely. So here's my VIC-20. Um, I have a uh, UK 1541, which I'll be reviewing at a later date. Um, and I'm going to be loading my software off of there. So fire it up. So when you first turn on the cartridge, you're presented with a very simple menu. Um, and it's, uh, it gives you game cartridges or games. So it's, it's basically the firmware on here is loaded with games. Um, there are um, currently two different firmwares which exist. The one that currently ships with this has Vic MIDI on it, and that's it, as far as I know. Um, when I when I got this, it had absolutely nothing, so I had to. It was, it was essentially a brick when I got it. Uh, went on the forum, denial forum, said, "Hey, what's going on?" You know, sorted it out. It was yeah, support was pretty good, um, and I got the firmware on it, and I've I've got a bunch of games. I'll show you in a second. Um, I know it about the firmware though. For putting on firmware that which only has maybe one or two programs, you could use a um, you know if you have some method of transferring um, that file over to a floppy disk, you could use an actual 1541 drive as long as it doesn't exceed say 170 kilobytes. The firmware which I have on here now is about 444 kilobytes, so far bigger than a 1541 drive can handle. So you're going to need something like an SD to IEC. Um, I used my, uh, my Commodore Flyer um, uh, drive, which supports D81 files. Um, those are around 800 kilobytes, or D82, which are on a megabyte. Um, the other option, which I was experimenting with the other day, is using a 1541 Ultimate. And if I have a, you have a tape expander, extender, or the tape adapter, sorry, you can connect that to the VIC-20, which will power the 1541 Ultimate, and you can have the firmware in the root directory of the SD card, and you'll be able to load it through the software IEC. Um, so that's another way that you can update the firmware on this thing. But it's definitely something to keep in mind. If you're going to be getting this, make sure you have the capability, or plan on getting, one of these options for updating the firmware. Okay, so the cartridge itself, currently the, the firmware that I'm using, has a bunch of different games on it. Let's look at the visible solar system. You know, I'm an astronomer by trade and yeah, this is pretty cool. One of the first astronomy apps ever. Um, so yeah, what are we looking at? We're looking at the Earth. Its radius is, I assume, in miles. 3,963. Um, whatever. This is Canada. We use kilometers. I don't know. So we have one moon and the day is 24 hours long. So I'm going to hit my reset switch. Here I go to games. And um, they're organized by the, the memory expansion that it uses, or the RAM that it needs. Um, now let's look up, uh, I'll be black, Vic Chess, there we are, chess program. Um, yeah, there's quite a few games on here, it's pretty neat. Um, unfortunately, the capability to produce your own firmware and with, load on your own software, and you know, make your own compilation, whatever, that's not yet available. Um, like I said, this is a very new product. The software support for it is still in its infancy. Um, and those things will be coming. In the future, it will be possible for you to make your own firmware with your own software list on it. Um, and, yeah, it's only going to get better. So, it's not a reason not to get this the Vic MIDI. 
Um, but if you do decide to purchase it now, you know, there's growing pains. You're going to have to wait a little while for it to be, you know, to fully reach its potential. Okay, so, um, you know, across the top of the keyword on the VIC-20 and any, any keyword really, you've got numbers. And those numbers here correspond to the expansion that you're going to be giving it, the RAM expansion. So if I hit 3, I'll be booted into the, you know, the main screen, and it will be uh, a 3 kilobyte RAM expansion. The VIC-20, um, over its lifetime, had a number of default RAM expansions, and those came in the form of um, the four kilobytes that it had free for basic to start with. I think it had five total, but someone was used to by the system. Um, there were three kilobyte cartridges, eight kilobyte cartridges, 16 kilobyte cartridges, and that was pretty much it. There was some larger ones, I think even up to 32 kilobytes, but those were rare. So, um, by hitting these numbers, I'll hit, uh, I think it's 8, and that will give me all the RAM that the VIC-20 can handle. Almost all the RAM. Um, I think this gives it a full 32 kilobytes of RAM, um, which is pretty impressive. 28 kilobytes free in BASIC, so for BASIC programming, that's, you know, you can do plenty on the VIC-20 with that. Um, there's, there's the possibility to have a little bit more, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and I'm going to be loading up Vic Doom. So Doom on the Vic 20. Um, yes, this is based on the original source code of Doom. Uh, same music. Um, the AI for the characters is even based on the original source code in C. Um, so someone ported it over to the Vic and it requires 35 kilobytes of RAM. So compared to the VIX, you know, standard like five kilobytes max on the unexpanded. So, yeah, this is kind of a good example of, you know, kind of, this is the proof that the RAM is in the machine here. So let's uh, use my, you know, UK1541. I will go to VIC Doom. And, Ah, I might add, hitting run stop from the initial menu um, brings up the standard unexpanded VIC-20. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go to that first, and then I'm going to load up my uh, program that I, I put on here. Um, this is from help um, I received on the denial forums to enable all of the RAM on it. Um, oh, all RAM. Eight. There we are. And this little program here will 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 peek and poke um, the registers to enable all of the RAM. So you might think, but didn't he say there was 128 kilobytes of RAM? Well, the VIC-20 can only handle I think it's 35, maybe a little bit more, maybe maybe 37, 38, something like that, like a theoretical maximum. But um, the extra RAM can be banked. You can um, you can swap between that RAM. So um, you've got a program. You fill up all the RAM there, and you just peek and poke, and then you pff, hit into the next bank, the next set of banks, and you can keep using the RAM. You can swap it back and forth, but you won't. The VIC-20 won't be able to see it all at once. Um, there is a project on denial. I think it's by Pixel right now to develop an OS for the VIC-20 with a GUI and everything, which will take full advantage of the RAM. So in this case, 128, and for the Ultima, up to one megabyte of RAM. That's a ton of RAM for the VIC-20. Uh, it's pretty neat. You should, you should go over to Denial, check it out. You'll see it's got a GUI, you, you know, it's um, different menus. It's, it's in its infancy, but it's, you know, this, this, this thing has a lot of potential. Okay, so now I'm gonna load up um, Doom. Let's bring it up here. Okay, so as is tradition in the Commodore Shack, while uh, we are loading, I usually have a brew. So I have, oh, I left it over here. Uh, I've been, you know, becoming a bit of a fan of the Whistler Brewing Company here, uh, Whistler BC, and um, they've got some, you know, some grapefruit ale. It's pretty good. Actually tastes just like grapefruit, kind of like breakfast beer. 
Um, you got your mountain logger and your bear paw. But um, you're thinking, why is he wearing a toque? It's uh, it's the summer. It's July. Yeah, it's July in Victoria, B.C. And it's like 14 out. It's chilly. We live right on the Pacific Ocean up north, and it's it's cold. Um, but you know, I'm I'm kind of longing for the the summer. So here's my lost lake. You know, with a beautiful woman there on on the dock, and you know, brings me makes me imagine that I'm someplace warm. Actually, tomorrow I'm going camping. Looking forward to that. Up oh, island should be warm. Okay, so Doom is loading here. The actual Doom um, title screen there. Takes a little bit to load. Almost there. Refreshing. And if you're noticing why do I have a Commodore 64 here? Well, I am going to be showing you how the VIC-20 and the C64 can make music together in just a second. But first, let's have a little round of doom. Okay. Keyboard controls. Let's go. Refreshing the damn. Almost there. Have another sort of beer. Doom! Okay, here we are. New game. Too young to die. No. It's actually pretty good. Um, this is an NTSC machine. I don't know, it might be a little faster than the PALS. I'm not, I'm not sure how this uh, works with the VIX. Um, but um, it's full on Doom. It's a 3D world in the VIC-20. So let me see if I can find some monsters to kill here. Alright, what can I find here? Ah, here we are. Shoot him. Security armor, good to go. Okay, so that's Doom. You can see, it's the real deal. Definitely, if you get one of these, Doom, first thing you should try. Okay, so let's reset that. Um, and now I'm going to show you what this thing's all about. It's all about the the MIDI capabilities. So, important, you know, we, we all don't do it, but you should turn it off before you plug stuff into it. So I can turn it off. I've got my two... Um, cables here. Let's see. Hope I hope I get them right here. Um, through and it's a bit of a um, yeah. It's gonna be a bit of a a random deal here. Oh no! I think I got them wrong. Okay. There we are. Let's just double check that I got the right cables in the right spots here. Okay. There we are. So now oh, my MIDI's hooked up. Um, I've got the keyboard running in to the input on the MIDI and the through is going through to the C64 with the Messiah cartridge and we'll uh, combine the two sounds to make it sound a little cooler okay so fire up the VIC-20 I'm going to go into the, the main menu here or the uh, unexpanded version um, and on my UK1541 I'm going to load up the Vic MIDI software. I'll just take one second. Okay, here we are. So I'm gonna fire up my keyboard. Here. Um, this software which I'm loading up right now is uh, written by Leaf Bloomquest, and it's uh, it works works really great. That the the, um, the response on it is really really nice. Like you can play it, and it's it's extremely responsive. Um, currently, it's only monophonic. Um, the 
apparently the polyphonic, so you can play more than one note at once. You can like, play up to, to four uh, voices at the same time with the VIC-20. Um, that is still incomplete. So hopefully in the future we'll be able to play polyphonic. But if you, like with the keyboard here, I can only do, you know, monophonic, uh, one note at a time. But if you have a controller, um, say a MIDI sequencer, your laptop, um, and you can you can hook that into this. You could get all four voices. So there's um, there's three um, three um, I think they're uh, three wave voices. I think they're square wave or yeah. And then you've got a noise channel, which I will show you in just a sec. Okay. So on my keyboard, let's cha select channel one and <gasps> big twenty making MIDI sounds. So it's pretty, pretty responsive. Um, I'm not a pianist, and I kind of suck on the piano. I'm not a guitar player. Yeah. Here's my guitar. Anyway, um, I'll do my best. Please excuse me if you don't actually know how to play the piano. Um, yeah, so you can do some pretty cool stuff. Ghostbusters, but one thing about the VIC-20 is that the um, the notes aren't exactly on. So there are three different ranges um, where the 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 um, voices of the VIC-20 lay. So you've got bass, tenor, and soprano, and they overlay in certain points. But as you get to the extremes of these voices, um, they start to go slightly at a tune. So depending on which octave you're in, where you're playing, you're going to want to select one voice or the other. I'll show you an example here. Um, so I will I will hit this the C note here, and I'll, I'll change to um, this. So this is voice one. This is voice one. Voice two, slightly higher. Voice three is right on, the same. Let's try this now. This is this is middle C. They're all different. You hear that? So this is the first. This is the this is the bass voice. It's high on middle C. The tenor voice is low. And the soprano voice is similar. So he's got these nuances. Apparently it has 7-bit um, resolution for um, the voices. Um, I'm going to show you after that there is a kind of work in progress, or like there's a... Someone's been working on 9-bit resolution. You can get some amazing sounds out of it. But anyway, it sounds pretty cool. So you can, um, you know, pick the right voice. I suck. Let's try doing something cool here, though. So, as you can see, I've got my blue Commodore 64 with Messiah, and on um, this, I've got it set up to also handle input on the MIDI. So, I'm going to start this at the same time, and we can combine the two together. <laughs> sounds. You might not be able to tell over YouTube, but sitting here with the two monitors going, pfft, it sounds pretty cool because it's all stereo. So I'm just going to try one more thing with this before I, I bore you all to death. 
I'm gonna try polyphonic on here. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna play something that I've known since I was a little kid. Ghostbusters from the VIC-20 and the C64. Okay, one more thing. I'm going to show you the capabilities of the VIC-20 itself as a bit of a, you know, goodbye. So I'm going to load up something called Datapop. And this is a really cool demo. I'm sorry I can't remember who did it right now. Um, but check it out. Search for Datapop VIC-20 and this is an amazing bit of music. As you'll see. Um, it's loading it up. So this demo here takes nine bit resolution on the on the notes, so it can hit exactly the notes that it should, which is pretty cool. So this is kind of beyond what the Vic Twenty was designed to do. It's a really cool tune, but um, yeah. As I listen to this, I'm going to uh, finish off my Lost Lake from Whistler. And, um, in conclusion, should you get the Vic Midi? Um, yes, you should. It's pretty cool. It can do a lot. Um, you can make some cool tunes with it if you know what you're doing. Uh, in the future, it's going to be a much more tempting proposition. Right now, it's very rough. Uh, as you saw, it doesn't have a case, uh, the software that exists for it is pretty basic, um, but that's all going to change with time. Um, it's Retro Innovations on their web store, uh, and the nice thing about them is that when they make a product, they keep it going for years and years and years, so the thing can mature. Uh, a good example would be the 64 Nick Plus. That thing's been on the store since 2008, I think, 2009, so it's many, many years. Um, so, you know, with some of these products with, for, the, for the Commodores, you see them, you want to get them, because they're gone, just like that. With this, it should be around for a while. So, if you want to get it now, awesome. If you want to stick it out and wait for the, the software to mature, that's also really cool. Um, but, yeah, I would highly recommend it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this review, and, um, yeah, see you again soon.